How's it going guys? Before we get into this week's video, head on down to that comment section, go crazy, leave us a question, leave us a comment. On your way down there, hit the subscription button, subscribe so you can follow along, and when you subscribe, be sure and hit that bell so you get notified when we upload a new video to our YouTube. Before we get started, Jeffrey, roll the intro. This week's episode, guys, I'm going to be talking about uh, what is in my pack. That was a request from the last video. What's in my pack? This version of what's in my pack, I'm going to do for you guys a what's in my pack every time the season changes or I'm going on a new type of trip or something. I'll do a new what's in my pack every time I do that. So this one is going to be COVID-19, my wife and I are going crazy in our house version. No, I'm joking, guys. But um, So I'm still going to work every day for COVID-19, but my wife has been at home, quarantined. Uh, we are socially distancing ourselves from friends and family, uh, but we did have an opportunity for my kids to hang out with Grandma and Grandpa for the weekend. And so we are going to head out for a one day. We're going to go camping for the whole weekend, but my bag will be one day worth of supplies. So I'm going to break down for you guys what's in my bag for one day. Uh, we're going to do some shed hunting. We're going to do some coyote calling and hunting. Uh, so it's going to be, you know, pretty flexible. This is a fairly dynamic, you know, capable bag. I could do just a, just about anything one day of backpacking. So to start with the bag itself, it's going to be the Exo Mountain Gear 1800. So that's a perfect one day, uh, you know, day pack style. I will run my lid because my lid kind of holds some important items that I usually carry with my 4800 when I am backpacking. Uh, but since I'm not going to be out for days, I'll just be carrying the 1800. Uh, water, first stop. I am a Nalgene guy. Personally, I've had, I've had uh, water bladders mess me up before. I've had the little, you know, like the closure or whatever style it is fail. I've had the bag blow up. I just prefer uh, now jeans, so I carry two. Um, sometimes I'll carry the liter and a half, sometimes I carry these smaller ones. These will do me for a day as far as drinking water and as far as uh, cooking water goes. Uh, for a water filter, I usually carry this little MSR. I think it's the um, Quick Shot, they call it. Uh, it's pretty cheap, I wanna say it's under 50 bucks. Um, it wouldn't work for like a camp system, you know, if you're going to be staying somewhere for a long time, I'd probably go with another type of system, probably the gravity feed stuff. But uh, it's perfect for a little quick, you know, just topping off now jeans as you're walking by a creek or something. Uh, this year, I'll let you guys know, uh, I am going to be running the SteriPen. So I'm going into the world of electronics and batteries and all that stuff. So I will keep you guys up to date on how the SteriPen works out. But I'm just letting you know this is what I've carried in the past. So this is my day pack. Um, I will have uh, food, obviously. Usually Mountain House. I'm a big fan of chicken and rice. Mountain House has a bunch of good meals, but uh, just I usually try and have one hot meal on me at any given point. Uh, you just don't know. You might get stuck for longer than you hope at any point, and you want to have uh, a meal, a hot meal. I always have snacks, usually beef jerky. Uh, Slim Jims, something like that, and then I'll usually have some sort of candy. High Chew is perfect because it's nice and uh, hard, and it's something you can just sit there and suck on for a long time. Keep you, uh, keep you, you know, while you're hiking, keep your mouth nice, nice and wet. Wet your whistle, as they say. Uh, another cool new thing I've been carrying is this, this like it's not 550 cord, it's 275, so it's like half, um, but it's by Atwood Rope Manufacturing. Uh, I got this from Brad at Argali. He was nice enough to just give me this at the at the Hunt Expo down in Salt Lake. Uh, but this is what he uses for his game bags. And I have used it, I'll show you guys, I'll move on to clothes. I'll tell you about why I carry this stuff now. Is because with my boots, which are the Kenetrek uh, Hard Scrabble Hiker, um, 
my laces finally broke after like three seasons of hiking. And when we were in Colorado last year, and I replaced my laces with the string from his game bags. I have some of them here somewhere. But uh, I replaced them with his game bags. So that stuff is super useful. You can hang game bags, obviously. You can hang um, stuff in a tree if you need to, uh, other than game bags, like maybe your food, if you're in a bear area, or a barrier, as we call it at PM Wild. Um, just super handy, super handy piece of equipment. Um, anytime I'm shooting, right, I might be doing some coyote calling. So anytime I'm shooting, I'll have Ear Pro. Uh, I like these like tethered style because I can just kind of throw them over at the beginning of the day and forget about them. And uh, maybe I'll forget about them when I shoot, but typically I try not to. Uh, I carry trekking poles almost all the time with me, even though I don't use them all the time. Uh, only if I'm traveling, covering a lot of distance, like if I'm going more than 10 miles in one push, you know, uh, like in a, in a morning or an afternoon push, then I'll get the trekking pole. See, it seems to, I don't know if it's just the, you know, like the serenity of it, of just like repetitive arms going, or if it actually does help go further. I don't know. I would assume it just got to take some, some load off your legs. Uh, but, uh, it sure is helpful when you're packing out an animal too. So I make sure to have trekking poles, um, no matter what time of year. For my clothes, uh, last year and this year, I've been running mostly Arc'teryx uh, because I've just found like the quality to be just outstanding. Um, the prices are, are honestly in line with, with where most hunting gear is. And I actually have an Arc'teryx, um, like an outlet very near to my house. So I can go down there and catch deals when they're on deals. Um, this is the covert hoodie which is kind of this perfect like you know mid mid insulation layer uh it's perfect on a morning uh waking up in the tent you know you get out of your sleeping bag and you kind of get that first little morning chill this thing is perfect this will be like what i'll throw on right over a t-shirt uh, or a base layer just to kind of take the edge off uh and it's definitely like if you're if it's super cold outside like in Colorado this year, it was pretty dang cold at night, you know, in, in third season. Uh, I was able to sleep in this and you can, it has a hood so you can throw the hood on and, and stay nice and comfortable. But I'm a big fan of this. You can, it gets a little hot for me if I'm hiking in it, but, um, but it could definitely, it can definitely fit that. I always make sure to have a rain jacket. So this is the Gamma Light Shell. So this is a super lightweight, super flexible, uh, soft shell rain jacket. Uh, still super waterproof. It's worked great for me. Uh, it sheds all the stuff. I make sure to uh, reapply DWR stuff to it or whatever the waterproofing stuff. Uh, and then my pants, probably like my favorite Arc'teryx piece is their pants. They do a really good job with pants, but uh, this is the Lefroy pant. And this is actually a rock climbing pant. So it's made to be super flexible and super durable, right? So like the, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see how much, but I'll like, I'll bring my hand out here so you can see. Like there is just a ton of stretch in this material. I don't know what, it, let's take a look and see what it is. Doesn't say what it's made up of. 88% uh, nylon and 12% elastane. Uh, whatever that stuff is, it's super flexible because this these pants are like really, really stretchy. The bonus of that stretch is they're impossible to break uh, because you can catch them on anything and they just stretch and stretch and stretch until you realize like, oh, I'm trying to rip my pant leg off on a rock. Uh, so I'm a huge fan of those pants. They're all of the Arc'teryx stuff, in my opinion, fits so fantastic for like what I want because I like a very slim uh, fit, like athletic fit. I don't want extra baggy material hanging off. Everything they make is just so like perfectly cut in my opinion. Um, gloves, I'm usually wearing mechanics gloves, uh, not because I'm a mechanic and no, I don't wear mechanics gloves when I am working on cars. I just wear mechanics gloves for when I'm hiking and all these do are one, they'll, if you're running with trekking poles, they'll help keep you from getting like a blister in the middle of your palm, you know, if you're going for a long ways. And two, 
they just, as you're reaching out, you know, you're grabbing limbs. If you're having to climb up hillsides on all fours, which seems to be always what happens. Um, the, any sort of glove just keeps your hands from getting cut up. It keeps them a little less dirty for when you got to eat too. You know, you aren't, uh, eating worms along with your mountain house. Um, so I'm a fan of just wearing gloves in general. Uh, they're kind of per taste, right? So on a shed hunt, I might be, I might use some glass to look for sheds. I might use some glass to glass for Kyle's if I'm calling for him. This is the slick, I can't remember the model. This is the slick pro CF 634. So the 634. Um, and then this, this head, I know slick came out with just last year, this like miniature pan head. And I cannot like the the tripod is great. I love that. I love that Slick went full on with the twist locks. Uh, it's just such a better system, honestly, than the old like latching locks. But uh, this pan head and the tripod's great, but the pan head is really where all the magic happens. For how small this thing is, the fact that it has like pretty dang fluid motion. Like you're not gonna be able to feel this. I can't. I can't let you feel it, unfortunately. But it is, it's pretty dang good for like how tiny it is. And I'm kind of a tripod head snob. I'm a, I'm a video head snob. And this thing does really, really well for its size. And like the size and weight of this tripod and head combo is pretty silly. It's pretty, pretty awesome for that. It just like tucks away. It fits in the 1800. Like it fits uh, on the, I run it on the side clipped in, but, or on the back if I just leave the spotter attached to it. Um, but it works pretty dang well. Uh, I, I like that tripod. Um, I will be carrying the Razer HD 85 millimeter angled spotter. Um, I am a proponent of the 85 mil. It's not that big a difference in weight or bulk. Oh, it's not that big a difference in weight or bulk. And it is a huge difference in light gathering and clarity and color, in my opinion. Uh, I've compared the 65 and the 85, and I just prefer the 85. In my opinion, it's, it's what you carry. Um, I will be carrying my Marsupial Gear Bino Harness. Uh, we have a review on our YouTube channel of these, but uh, stay tuned because there might be some, uh, some stuff coming from Marsupial Gear, and uh, we may have some info on it. But... Just honestly, the best design that we have found on the market. It opens down, it has a magnetic closure and open. Um, you know, it just, it's an awesome piece of equipment. Um, inside of my Marsupial Gear Bino Harness, I will have my new, to me this year, Razor 10x42 UHDs. So I should be able to pick out just about any coyote or uh, shed with those things because they are pretty stupid clear. Um, I'm running the Razor uh, 4000 rangefinder this year. Uh, Jeff ran this last year and I ran the Ranger 1800, uh, but I'm pretty excited to run this Razor 4000 because I got to use Jeff's a few times last year. And this thing is, is super money. It has ELR mode uh, that you can eat, turn on through the menu, which is uh, extended long range, I believe would be the acronym, but uh, it just works like really far way farther than I'm going to shoot. Uh, and then the last thing that I'll always have in my bag will be this little kit. And it's kind of a catch-all. I have a knife in here. I have my tags in here, my licenses. I carry spare batteries for headlamps. Uh, I carry a headlamp in here. I carry some coffee, some like, I usually leave this as backup coffee. So in case I run out, my first aid kit, I have quick clot, ibuprofen, uh, gauze. Obviously I carry my titanium spoon in here. Uh, I carry some aqua tablets and, uh, I think it's, oh, yep. And then fire starters. So this is kind of just a, uh, and then I typically will carry cash in here as well. I like to have a little bit of cash on me, especially if I'm backpacking, like for, you know, a number of days. Uh, cause usually you don't have your wallet on you, but it still could be nice if by chance you have to. You know, let's say you have to go out a different route than you went in or something. For whatever reason, it might be nice to have some cash to buy somebody a tank of gas for giving you a lift home to your truck. Um, so that's about it, guys. That wraps up this week's video. Uh, that is what would be in my pack for a one-day trip for elk, 
uh, shed hunting or for coyote hunting. Um, Thank you for watching this week's video. Feel free to smash that subscribe button and come on back next week for that next video. Call.